How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about Stranger Things Zombie Boys, as well as Stranger Things The Bully. These are two young adult graphic novels put out by Dark Horse uh, for the Stranger Things show. Now, Dark Horse Comics had been publishing a lot of Stranger Things comics. I've reviewed most of them on this channel. Uh, I think Science Camp actually just put out its uh, last issue, so I'll get to that pretty soon. Um, but I figured I had read all these other Dark Horse Stranger Things comics. I'm not really a big young adult guy, but I figured why not finish up the uh, the books and read the last couple. Now these, uh, because they're young adults, are shorter, th I believe, than the uh, regular Stranger Things graphic novels. Uh, but in addition to being shorter, they're also smaller. So I have Stranger Things the other side waiting in the uh, the wings over here. And if we put the Stranger Things young adult novels in front of it, we can see that it is a little more than an inch shorter and a little more than half an inch thinner. So these are printed in a smaller size than the regular Stranger Things uh, graphic novels. Now, that is going to, you know, make a little bit of a dip down in your shelf if you have them all <laughs> nice and in a row, but yeah, whatever. Um, so since these are shorter, I'm going to try to do them both in one video. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at uh, Zombie Boys first. Now, uh, Zombie Boys is also what I think uh, the better one, but I also think it uh, it did come first, so I'll do them chronologically. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the uh, story, the, the plot. No major spoilers, but I do want to uh, make sure you guys know what the book's about, as well as say my piece on some uh, plot points. But anyway, let's go ahead and open up Zombie Boys. There's the nice cover there, and the uh, foreground is a higher gloss than the background, which I do like. That's a nice uh, detail. Um, first things first, the credits. Script by Greg Pack. Art by Valeria uh, Favokia. I'm sure I mispronounced that. Uh, colors by Dan Jackson. Lettering by Nate Pecos of Blambot. And cover art by Ron Chan, and you get this nice splash of all the characters at the top in this notebook motif. Uh, we open it up, and it begins with Will drawing, and uh, quite conveniently for us, if you haven't seen the show, he's uh, drawing a catch-up on season one, <laughs> which is fun. Um... And you get to get a quick recap of Season 1. This takes place between Season 1 and Season 2 and does a good job of uh, connecting the Season 1 elements with the Season 2 elements. It's pretty fun. Uh, but anyway, uh, Will, everybody thought he was dead and uh, now he's back. And people think, oh, that makes him weird. And they've given him the nickname Zombie Boy. The kids bully him and he runs away spilling his papers and one of the papers is picked up by this guy and which one did he pick up well it's a drawing of will himself as the zombie boy and he's a uh, eating that guy with a little skull in the back there uh, quick catch up with uh, Mike and Lucas Mike is still looking for L and Lucas has to deal with some nasty bullies uh, more on them in a second. Um, they get to the AV club where we learn that the kids are distracted from the events of season one. Dustin is almost failing English and they really need to study and catch up. Um, but then a new kid joins the AV club. This kid's a big movie fan and he wants to make movies. Um, you see he's got the shirt that's a Jaws reference. Um, they obviously took out the word Jaws so they could uh, use it without copyright. But movie t-shirt, glasses, hat, and jacket. Uh, if you guys seen the videos where you can uh, see what I look like, you make the hat brown and the jacket green. And 
that's pretty much what I wear a lot, so I guess all us horror movie geeks dress alike. Uh, but anyway, he wants to make a movie, and the uh, AV club teacher talks the principal into letting them use that for extra credit, so this will help the boys out. Now, what does he want to make a movie about? Well, you see, this kid is the kid that found Will's zombie boy's drawing, and he wants to turn that into a zombie movie, which, of course, uh, mortifies Will, but all the other kids go, what's this drawing? That's so cool, we have to do it. And that's the setup for the rest of the novel. It's going to be these kids making a zombie movie, which is really, really fun, even though this novel doesn't have any, you know, extra dimensional monsters in it it still is a fun bit of a uh, movie making which a lot of us do have interest in but also it being essentially downtime with the stranger things kids i feel that after you read this you really do get to know these kids better than if you just watch the show there's really good bits of character development and i want to go ahead and uh show you guys a few little bits of this story, these great little character moments um, that they sprinkled throughout here, you get uh, the principal called uh, Will's mom after he saw the zombie boy drawing, and she brings it up to the doctor at Hawkins' lab, and you know uh, the doctor has to say, "Look, just because your kid is a little bit interested in scary things, that's." That's not really a bad thing. He can like zombies, and that's fine. Which, boy, that's a scene that I'm sure a lot of us horror fans can uh, relate to, and I'm glad to see that there. There's uh, other nice moments as well. You get to see a little bit of uh, Dustin and his mom there preparing for the movie. And, you know, that's a character we just saw briefly in, uh, well, a bit in Season 2, and it's a, a good introduction to uh, keep her on you know, your mind, him, and this uh, relationship with his mom, you get Will also wanting to incorporate some humor into the story, and the other boys not liking that. And I do like that they don't just agree on what the story's about. And Will has this one idea, and all the other kids are like, what? what? You can't put humor in it. Um, another really fun uh, character beat Um Lucas gets bullied. Uh, they find out they're making a movie and the bullies uh, tease him about that trope about how the black characters always die in movies. And he, because of that, you know, they were planning on everybody dying in this movie. And Lucas says, hey, I, I don't really want to support that trope. I, I want to make it through this movie alive. And he has to talk uh, Joey Kim into that and they decide hey yeah let's let's not play into movie tropes which hey that's a pretty mature theme uh, dealt with in a way that fits with the story and yeah I have to <laughs> have to really applaud you know them talking about lots of issues and then you know the finale of the book I'm not going to show you as much of that but you do the get them going off into the woods in the middle of the night making this movie. So lots of character beats, and I really feel, you know, you get to see how much, you know, each one of them in particular will struggles with the events of season one, and you do get to know each one of the kids. They gave each one a, a little beat so that you got to know them a little bit better, and I do really love this story for character development, plus they're making movies, which is always fun. You know, you get, like, you probably saw them playing with the uh, the fake blood and working out special effects and trying to figure out how to film it. I really do like this novel. It's a fun concept, and you also get to know the kids uh, better. You know the characters from the movie better reading this. That's that's really great. Up next, we have the, the second one, Stranger Things, The Bully. You get... The bully and his friend, uh, Troy, open it up. You see that uh, Troy has been having nightmares about Eleven. You know, Eleven made him wet his pants in the show as uh, well as he, uh, I think he broke his arm, right? Um, but he's having nightmares of Eleven uh, just uh, murdering him. And 
he's really afraid of her and his mom is supportive but his dad does not like his son being a uh, a wuss and you do get a bit of that relationship uh how his father never wants to uh never wants to admit when he's wrong and he's kind of crazy and you see why uh Troy is a bully there's a shot there of him trying to run over a squirrel for fun so you really see what kind of guy this is um but yeah after the events of season one he's worried about you know he was the the bully he was on top and now you know people are remembering that he wet his pants in front of everybody and he is worried about losing his status now throughout the rest of the novel uh him and his friend kind of wander into stranger things season two uh into like these extra scenes you know so there's a bit with them at halloween that uh, i don't believe you saw in the show so them meeting the stranger things kids as ghostbusters and doing a little bit of a bullying there and you get later on in the book the kids happen to wander into the hawkins pumpkin patch that was all uh destroyed by those uh those tunnels and the little uh demogorgons where of course the uh kids do run into a bit of trouble uh you also do get uh another bit of them with a much more demogorgon danger uh that happens uh towards a later bit of that season as well but that's probably too far into spoiler territory to cover so there is more actual action with this book because these are characters that are more off to the side and they can have a little bit of liberty with but it is a lot of them running into the background now this one you know it is about the relationship between him and his best friend and how the lessons he learns from his fathers are not uh, from his father is not necessarily the best way to preserve a friendship now you do get of course with the bully story this is going to be a redemption arc and what i do like about it is you know throughout the whole book you know he's making wrong choices and you get to the end and you think okay maybe he's going to have a big hero moment but rather than giving him a big hero moment they uh actually let his redemption come in the form of a much smaller personal moment uh but yeah it's um it's got bigger elements actually seeing some monsters in this one and that is cool but at the same time you know it's not as relatable a character you know with this book you're going to be following the bully around which you instinctively don't like him as well as the other stranger things kids but there is a lot of good message in this book you know seeing where the bully comes from and going the long route to get him to learn uh to be a better person you know and it's it's got deep themes i didn't like it as well as the first one uh but i still think there is a lot in here although it is kind of the bullies rundering into like stranger things season two deleted scenes but uh interesting enough uh yeah i didn't like the characters as well the story wasn't as strong but the themes were pretty good so it's it's still good but i'm definitely if we had to compare the two i'm definitely in the zombie boys camp but overall these were two pretty fun uh stories and especially because they're you know side stories they couldn't necessarily do big cool revelation uh things but for what they could do with these books they got a quite a bit of mileage out of them and i was really glad that um these stories you know despite being for kids had a uh, really mature elements and you know they weren't afraid to uh well not mature as in like violent but you know thoughtful and they weren't afraid to you know take deep dives and you know look at the characters and plus they still are pretty fun you know making a movie and some background demogorgon action and in regards to young adults i meant to cover this when we were there but there's kind of this funny moment where in the zombie boys book you know 
uh, Joey Kim says, damn straight. And the professor corrects him. He's like, you mean darn straight. And, um, you know, they do have, you know, minor, not bad uh, swearing in this book, which I, I do like. It's accurate to the uh, show as well. But anyway, a, a good surprise, a fun little side stories. And I felt like I got to know the characters better at the end of these. So these are actually really fun and I hope they put out more. Like I said, I'm not the biggest young adult comics guy, but these were overall a pleasant surprise. Anyway, I'll try to get to uh, Stranger Things Science Camp relatively soon. Uh, but other than that, I do about a comic a, I do a comic a week on here. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, I recommend uh, sticking around. To everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked uh, or subscribed, uh, thank you. You really are helping this channel out. Uh, I'll put a relevant playlist at the bottom if you want to see more comic stuff I did. That should have a lot of the other Stranger Things comics in there, too. Anyway, uh, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Oh, and um, if you do like scary movies, I do a ton of scary movie reviews on here other than comics. That's primarily what I do, so you can find some of those as well. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom.